Aloha and welcome to our three-part program on proper treatment methods for controlling little fire ants in Hawaii. We're specifically talking about the little fire ant and not any other type of ant. From time to time we might use the acronym LFA for little fire ant. Other times we might just say fire ant but we really are talking about the tiny ones. And we're also talking specifically about the environment in Hawaii. We'll also show you some commercial products, but we're not affiliated with any business or brand, and we're not trying to sell you anything. It's just that you probably will see these products in the stores and hear people talking about them, so it'll help you get a better understanding of the situation. So, without further ado, let's get into part one. So I guess one of the problems we have here in America is that there are a number of ants that we commonly call fire ants. Uh, in the southern USA there's a species of ant which is com called the red port fire ant and most people call that a fire ant. But it's completely different from the ant that we have here which is the little fire ant. So the behaviour and the ecology of little fire ants is very different from the fire ants that we have on, on the mainland USA. In, in the southern states. Our fire ants live in trees as well as on the ground so they will actually build nests in the canopy of trees and they're very very small. The regular fire ants that we see in the mainland USA are much larger and they don't nest up in trees they only nest in the soil. So little fire ants have much smaller colonies and they're interconnected and they can be only just a few feet apart but rather than having one very large central colony. Little fire ants tend to have much smaller colonies uh, that uh, still communicate with each other and still work together. baits work because ants are attracted to it and they want to feed on it and by feeding on it and feeding it to their sisters the very small amount of insecticide that's in the bait becomes effective. And the other kind of uh, treatment that we can use is commonly called a barrier treatment which is granules or a liquid that we spread on the soil and any insect that walks across it is going to die. Uh, the problem mostly comes uh, because it's very difficult to tell those two kinds of products apart. We have baits and we have these residual granules or barrier treatments and they come in very similar packaging uh, with very similar claims. But it's really not clear which is which. So everybody finds it difficult to, to, to know which product they buy. For example this product here which is uh, quite quite common here in on the shelves here in Hilo. It says Fire Ant Shield Mound Destroyer. It's made by Spectricide. And this product here is called Andro. Fire Ant Bait kills fire ants, destroys the mound. So the the wording on these products, on these labels, is, is almost the same, and it is very difficult to tell the difference between the two. So what people need to do is look more carefully at the label. So this one, this is bait, uh, has, does have the word bait on it. So it's a fire ant bait. And that tells you that's food. So this is food with a small amount of insecticide mixed with it. And this one here says, starts to kill in minutes. That's a pretty good indication that it is some kind of insecticide or a pesticide mm -hmm. and that it's to be used as a barrier. So the important thing is to read the label and to read the, the fine print on the back. And that will kind of, hopefully most of the time at least, tell you which is which. The other confusing thing is all of these are granules. So how are we going to tell what, does the, what do these granules do? These over here are baits. Um, if you read the directions, it says sprinkle them around and do not get wet. Because uh, if they get wet, that's going to affect their, um, they're not going to work as well, basically. 
These other products like Ortho and Spectracide, um, they're still granules, but if you read the directions, they're gonna say water in. So you have to sprinkle it around and water it in. These are barrier treatments. These will not be taken back to the nest. Uh, so that's a big uh, misconception that a lot of people have. And people get confused. And so sometimes they will buy a bait thinking it's a granular pesticide and, and they'll, they'll apply it to the ground and then they'll water it in. And what happens is that that bait then becomes all soggy and unattractive to the ants. So baits, when they are wetted down, become less effective. And granules, when they're wetted down, become more effective. The problem is being able to tell one from the other. So when you walk into the store, I understand that you see shelves and shelves of different products. You, people talk about Amdro a lot, it's a very popular brand. Um, and you'll see three different types of products, maybe more, of Amdro. You're also going to see these other products like Spectracide or Ortho that say they're mountain destroyers and fire ant killers. And it gets really overwhelming um, what, what products to choose from. So first thing we want to know is we want to know that Amdro is a brand. It's a brand that has a lot of different products. You have baits, ant baits, you can have weed killers, um, same thing with ortho and spectricide. When it comes to ant baits, then the different products um, can do different things. For example, the shaker bag is not one that we generally recommend because it has two different active ingredients in there that can counteract the effects. It's not ideal. We generally like to recommend using one of the jugs, the plastic jugs, because this has one active ingredient and these work very well, just as they are. So are you totally confused? Barrier treatments need to be used and applied in a certain way and baits need to be used differently. But even within the same brand, there are certain baits that work more effectively than others. And it's not so much the active ingredient, but the formula or recipe, so to speak, that makes it more attractive to a certain type of ant. So since this can be totally confusing, we want to start at the very basic level and make sure you choose the right product for the right type of ant. And in this case, we're talking about little fire ants in Hawaii. Once you have the right product, read the label and use it properly. If you have more questions, I suggest you contact the folks at the Hawaii Ant Lab. Let's review part one. Common errors. Number one, assuming all types of ants are the same, and that any product you grab off the shelf will work for LFA in Hawaii. Number two, assuming that ant control strategies for other types of fire ants in other parts of the world will apply equally to LFA in Hawaii. Number three, confusing a barrier pesticide treatment with a bait. Best practices, consult and research credible sources locally to make sure you choose the right product for LFA in Hawaii. Number two, read the label carefully, then use it properly. Number three, water in granular barrier pesticides, but do not water in or wet granular baits. This three-part series is basically an overview of common errors and best practices when treating for LFA. More detailed videos and tutorials are available on the Hawaii Ant Lab website and on my YouTube channel, so you might want to refer to those for more detailed information. This concludes part one. In part two, we'll look at granular baits and how to apply them properly. Thanks for watching. Aloha, ahoy ho.